When your idea started to gain traction amongst your colleagues and your friends and your family members, you, do you remember that time? What was it that you did at that time that, that made them start to say, hey, hang on a second, maybe Samuel has got a good idea going on right there. What was it that happened there? Yeah, it took them a long time. Um, it's such an abstract concept, mm. uh, a museum of failure that is, that's aimed towards, you know, um, the communicating the message that we need to accept failure for, for, for innovation. <clears throat> it's so abstract, so I, I understand that people found it difficult to grasp. Um, and then what was it? I mean, I just knew that I had to get this, this crazy idea out of my head. Uh, and if I didn't, if I just start, if I just talked about it, mm. people would just think I was crazy, more crazy. Um, but I knew I had to get it in, I had to execute it. Um, <clears throat> it, it. I mean, it is difficult when you have a vision. Um, I'm just going to read, I'm gonna cut this. I just want to make it, say it one more sure. time, and yeah, then just sure. we can edit it. <clears throat> um, it's difficult for to have a vision. I oh, sorry. I mean, it, it's it's something that's a, that's the same experience for any any leader right. that has a vision. Mm -hmm. They have to communicate it. They can't um, execute their vision alone. Right. They need their whole team. To they make need people understand and to accept that vision. Yeah, and, and to get excited about it and join you in the journey. Yeah, and that's a communication problem. Yeah. So, um, if you can solve that, if you can get people to understand and sort of back your vision, then then it can it can happen. Was there anybody at that point that that came out and said, "Hey, Samuel"? Let me help you with this. It was a uh, sort of an unexpected uh, uh, was supporter. That? It was the Swedish state. The state? Yeah, so okay. the Swedish state has an innovation fund mm -hmm. and they fund different innovation projects. Right. <clears throat> so early on in the project, I was like, I can't, this is going to cost a lot of money that mm -hmm. I don't have. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, I mean, it's a state organization, you know, slow, yeah. you know. But they got the idea. They got and it. They got it. And they they're like, it. this is awesome. And they funded it quite generously as well. Excellent. So without them, it would never have happened. All right. Um, of all the, um, how many collections do you have right now in your museum? <clears throat> you know? Yeah, I, no, <laughs> but I can guess. Um, we have in the Swedish exhibit that's open now, I think mm -hmm. there's about 80. Mm -hmm. uh, failed products, services, objects. Right. Um, and then in Los Angeles, the exhibit that was in Los Angeles that's now moving to Shanghai, sure. um, there's over 100. Right. So somewhere, I mean... Just under 200. Yeah, but I, there's a lot of overlap. So let's say yeah. 130 or something right. like that. Is, is there anyone amongst what, those uh, many um, um, exhibits that you have in your museum that really stands out and, and has a special place <laughs> yeah. for various oh. reasons. So one of my favorites, it's because it's kind of funny mm -hmm. and it also sort of very well illustrates innovation failure. Okay. <clears throat> so Procter & Gamble, mm -hmm. one of the world's biggest Big consumer, consumer uh, product uh, yeah. companies, the United States in 1996, they developed or they launched the most fantastic product on earth. Which it's is? It's called Olestra. Okay. okay. That what means, is that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Olestra is was is <clears throat> a calorie-free fat substitute. Sounds good. It's not good. It's great. It's amazing. It's amazing <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Yes. It's a revolution. It's it's a it's a it's a, a new product or, or substance that was you, you could make potato chips out of it. Out of it, so you could that, that you could that you could eat as many as you wanted to without getting fat. Without getting fat, guilt-free potato chips. Yeah, actually, <laughs> my kind of chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, their slogan was 100% satisfaction, 0% guilt. Wow. Okay. So why did it fail? <laughs> yeah. So um, the problem with these this Olestra uh -huh. was that there um, was a small side effect. Okay. Diarrhea. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That's more than small. So, <laughs> so sure, you didn't get fat from mm. eating the potato chips, but you had to sit on the toilet the entire the, the day. Rest of the day. Yeah. Okay. So, and I think it's, I think it's a beautiful example because it's kind of, I mean, diarrhea is kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in yeah, that yeah, sense. Yeah, no, no. Yeah.
Um, but it, it illustrates how even the biggest companies with the biggest resource, the, the greatest resources, can can fail in product development, mm. um, and also how you can never. I mean, you can never do enough testing. You can't do enough to understand your product yeah. exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, I mean, the fact that it's something that everybody can relate to, uh, food, yeah. also makes it interesting. Yeah. So that's one of the sort of fun, interesting ones. And then right. there's my favorite sort of which stories, okay. um, which one of them would be Kodak. Um, you're familiar with the company Kodak? Yes, mm -hmm. they used to make uh, films for yeah. cameras. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The emphasis is on used to make, used to make. because they're bankrupt now. That's right. <clears throat> so um, Kodak was the sort of the, I mean, it was, a, it was an iconic company. Exactly. They had no. um, the best engineers, the, the most money, uh, prestige. They had it all. Um, they actually invented the digital camera in the 1970s. That's a long time ago. That far back. Yeah. Wow. So, um, what happened was they actually um, neglected sort of, they didn't start developing the digital camera because they thought it was, it would uh, threaten their, their film. The core business. Yeah, th they made all their money selling film. Mm. Okay, so fast forward um, uh, several uh, um, um, decades and the rest of the world was catching up. Mm. And they're like, okay, let's start making digital cameras. So they did and they were the best at it. You follow me so far? Right, yeah. Okay. So, but they're like, hmm, uh, let's sell digital cameras and make our money selling film paper. Ah, oh, that's in... What? Why so, would you want to print digital pictures yeah, for? Yeah, so when they sold their cameras, they, they saw um, the dig digital, uh, digital cameras as a way to sell more photo paper. Does that make, I mean, no. now in retrospect, it makes, doesn't plan. make any sense. Yeah, but, no. So what actually happened with Kodak is, um, you know, pretty soon there's cameras in our, in our cell phones, it's everywhere, nobody prints fo uh, photos, photos anymore. Yeah. Kodak goes bankrupt. Right, yeah. The interesting thing about Kodak is they had everything. They had the knowledge, they had the, 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 in, I mean, the insight, they had the, the, the tech skills, they had it all. But they couldn't, they were not flexible with their business model. Oh, so it's not about technology. It's about if they would have changed or been innovative mm. about their business model, they could have changed. Instead of making money on photo paper, mm. which was going nowhere, they could have changed that and made money off maybe sharing photos like mm. Instagram does right, right. <laughs> uh, or, or any other number of ways to, mm. to generate revenue. Thank it's you. a long story, so I don't mm. really tell it that often because mm. it takes too much time to explain, but it's, it's an interesting story to show that um, we have to be, that innovation has to occur in every aspect of a company.